Welcome everybody to a virtual field trip to the studio of metals artist and designer goldsmith, Alix Hart. Alix is a contemporary artist whose designs range from exquisite traditional jewelry to the truly avant-garde, as you can see on her website, alexandrahart.com. Despite her own contemporary approach, she points out the tech that I am using is the first Bronze Age tech with a few extra, you know, bits of equipment that make it easier than starting your own fire, you know? So really, it is very um, profoundly historical. It's early human kind of evolution stuff we do here. The first technique Alix is demonstrating is casting gold or heating it to a liquid state and then shaping it using a mold. First, Alix uses a torch to smoke the mold, covering it in a powdery soot that will help it release the gold. This mold is made from steel and used to cast wire with different sizes of openings for different gauges of wire. Alix tightens the two sides of the mold closed with a clamp the mold rests on a ceramic tile on top of volcanic pumice, all enclosed within a metal wheel that Alix can spin to evenly distribute the heat of her flame. It is necessary to preheat the mold so that when the molten gold is poured in, it doesn't cool too fast to fill the mold. While the mold is heating, Alix also heats the crucible. The gold she's using is scrap left over from prior projects and is all 18 karat, which means it's 75% pure gold and 25% copper and silver. Gold is super malleable. 18 karat is an alloy, which means not pure, because pure gold is so malleable, it's too malleable for jewelry. To the crucible, she adds borax, which floats up like sparkly snow. The flux is necessary to remove other impurities from the gold. So the borax is what's called flux. Flux allows the gold, you see it melting? Isn't this fun? Flux also helps the liquefied metal flow fluidly. Alix applies direct heat to the wire size she wants, about four millimeters wide, and pauses to switch out her dark glasses. The gold has liquefied and runs around the crucible. Alix warms the spout of the crucible to make sure it will flow well. After years of experience, she works by feel. The thing about metal, and I, I mentioned earlier, you develop a relationship with material. That's why I am a craftsperson, is because I know and love and interact with material. Um, I, I get to know its nature and I work with it. I don't work against it. You know, metal can melt and it melts like this. Metal can bend and it bends like that. I don't make it do what it doesn't want to do. I just make it do what it wants to do well. <laughs> Alix pours the liquid gold into the pre-warmed mold. When Alix loosens the clamp and separates the two halves of the mold, we can see a length of the gold wire. Watch. After dipping it in water, it is cooled enough to hold in her hand. So that is some wire. So the mold was a little cold. It should have gone all the way down instead of chilled out at the top. Okay. And that's because I didn't heat the mold evenly enough but I can probably still use it. Gold can be cast, as we just saw, pulled into very thin wires and hammered into sheets thinner than paper. Copper is another metal that can be shaped and hardened by hammering, as Alix shows in this next demonstration. 
these are flat sheet right now. This is raw and annealed. This is what copper looks like, uh, like the mineral copper looks like. The darker colors happen when they oxidize and hang out in the air. To shape the metal, Alix uses a wood block she shaped by hand and her favorite hammer. I have a lot of hammers, <laughs> but this is the one that's made most of my jewelry. Okay, so this is already cut, sheared, and already I smoothed the edge so it wouldn't be sharp. So the first thing you do is you work the ends and to get the convex curve, you work over the edge. And already you can see that very quickly it's going to start to curve in both this way and the curve is this way and this way. It's called anti-clastic. Also, as you work it, it hardens. see how much it mattered that you had a nice smooth edge uh -huh. and fairly straight and that you started at the ends because it's really hard to do when it's round. So I've now, now gone from here to here to here. It's a little bit more tight because I want to curve it up more. The more you curve it this way, the more it wants to open that way. So that's why I have to grab it on both sides here. And now, even though I'm striking in the middle, I'm not actually hitting the bottom. I'm only hitting the metal. And what it's doing is it's forcing this lip up by striking here. It's forcing that up more while not opening up because I'm holding it. start to come out over the side using the other side of the hammer and curve that edge over so that it's even taller. The texture as the bracelet takes shape reflects the tools that Alix used. The shiny point of her steel hammer, which is harder than the soft copper, leaves shiny marks, whereas the wood keeps the copper matte. If the copper were heated or annealed to soften it up again, it would resume the matte texture of the original sheet. On another piece in progress, inspired by a feather, she has used the hammer to create a linear pattern setting off a spine into which stones will eventually be set. So yeah, it's slow, but this is old tech. And you know, it, it's really this simple. <laughs> it's very, very simple if you understand a few um, characteristics of the metal. The metal is really cooperating. Copper is wonderful because it's got a long working time. It's really fun. Even though I make this look easy, this isn't easy, but it's still fun, you know, when you get it to react. For more information about Alix, her studio, and her background, be sure to check out the video of our studio interview.